President-elect, uh, Joni was not able to be here today, so I'm filling in. This is my practice run for next year. <laughs> uh, start off with one verse of America with verse at the piano. invite some guests. I was in a meeting earlier today with Larry Moronski, meeting with somebody, and I said, why don't you come to Rotary? So we're going to work on her, or Larry will. Yeah, we'll she'll be a great addition. Uh, let's see, our September charity, future charity, is the STARS program, Stop Trafficking and Reject Slavery. We had a presentation, what, about two weeks ago on the program, and I uh, want to make sure we contribute generously to that. So pass the cup lighting around, please. Uh, our red badge recipients are not here today. Um, additional announcements. Uh, any friend X announcements? I'm belatedly doing one. I got from my friend X. He or she gave me a very nice KU baseball cap and KU large grande uh, tumbler mug. So I appreciate that. And he or she did pick the correct school. Um, we did. <laughs> We do have coming up a uh, potential service project. We have the Race Against Breast Cancer. Now, on October 3rd, we do need some additional volunteers, and that uh, function will be stuffing packets for the racers. And I think that will be taking place in the evening of the 3rd. Now, the race itself is on October 5th. We will need uh, volunteers for that. And on the tables, you'll find some uh, sign-up sheets if you do not already have one of our blue volunteer t-shirts, if you want to, this is particularly important on the race day, we want you there in your volunteer shirts. So if you don't have a shirt, sign up and we'll make sure that you do get a shirt. We'll have more details. We're not sure exactly what our function is on race day, but we'll have more details to come on that. Uh, yes. Great, thank you. If you all heard that, w watch for that, and uh, you'll be able to uh, get more information and, and volunteer that way. Uh, there is no noon meeting next week, and we'll try and repeat that later, but that's important. We are having a social, and that will be in the evening, and we're celebrating Linda's retirement. It will be at the Celtic Fox, which is at 8th and Jackson, I believe. If you can visualize the Capitol grounds, it's, think of the northeast corner, diagonally across from there is the Celtic Fox. Most of you probably know where that's at. Um, let's see, Marie, if you could come up, we do have a job opening, and she's gonna give you a little bit of information about that. Stan? While she's coming up, can I just say, my friend X sent me a gift today, a bottle of wine, and said, great wine tasting event, Steve. Well, uh, and yeah, by the way, no it game goes unrewarded. It was fun. I can tell you it was very good, and thank you for hosting you and your brother. Well, building off of Stan's um, information about Linda retiring um, as our administrative assistant, um, we have Pete, Stephen, Joni, Underwood, and I have been working on a position description. And at your table, there are at least two copies of the position description that um, we will be looking for somebody to attempt to fill Linda's very able shoes. Um, we worked directly with Linda uh, as we developed the, the position description. And um, we have divided it into um, particular quadrants. Um, we will be uh, looking to our committees to be a little more hands-on 
and, and help us with a lot of the work of the club, but this is specifically what we're looking for for the administrative system. I will not go through it with you because it will be available on the website and you do have a copy. I have extra copies if you know somebody and they are more of a paper person than an email person or a website person. Um, the things that I want you to know um, specifically is in, in discussions with Linda, we talked about um, the number of hours. And so we're looking for somebody who can work 15 to 20 hours per week. Um, we are asking that at least four of those hours um, work in the Rotary office, so, um, but that will be negotiable in terms of what hours work best. Um, but then we'll have somebody there. So um, we're looking at the salary and working with Kathleen Hine on um, a, a good salary uh, for the particular person we're looking at, a 13 to 15 dollar an hour, um, negotiable based on experience. And we want them to submit a resume and cover letter by October 4th. Um, and the point person is, is Jenny Underwood, is the club president. There is an email address that people can submit that information um, as well um, through email. Or we do have the address for the Rotary office. So there's a very quick turnaround, but um, we're hoping that um, there's a quick turnaround. Thank you, Mike. There's a quick turnaround, but we're hoping that um, you can help us spread the word. Um, about the position um, and use your networks to um, recruit uh, a person who can't possibly walk in Linda's shoes but can help us move forward again um, as uh, with, with this particular position. <coughs> Linda is retiring as uh, our employee but she has agreed to be a member so um, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions specifically, please, today, please, I'll be available after the meeting if you have any questions specific to this. Um, other than that, Joni is the point person. So, thank you. Kathleen Marker is going to share some information with you, and I'm really excited about this. These are the kind of developments that make me love Rotary. So. happy to share some information about how Rotary really does connect the world. So as you all know, uh, this club's foundation um, gave the YWCA Center for Safety and Empowerment a $20,000 grant uh, for our uh, Human Trafficking Day Center. <coughs> um, that $20,000 has now turned into $120,000. So, thanks to the foundation's uh, $20,000 uh, grant, we were able to grow that into $120,000 with a Rotary Global Grant. And so, with the cooperation, of, well, with the assistance of Larry Dimmitt. Larry, where are you? I think you're here. So, Larry had some connections with some folks in Mumbai, India. <coughs> And so the club there um, had initiated the global grant and with the, um, also the assistance of the South Topeka Rotary Club, who was also participating, and then a match from our district grant, all total, and I'll have more details, this was just announced here in the last few days, that we now have a $120,000 grant. So uh, Rotary really does connect the world, and we are thrilled, and we will be able to do such great work and have such an impact in our community. So, thanks to all of you and thank all of Rotarians. This is absolutely great news. Uh, I think I'm ready for Marie to come back a second time and introduce our speaker. <clears throat> So my goal as program chair is to provide a diversity of engaging activities and programs for you um, that can surprise and delight, pique and spark that curiosity. Um, and so with my team, uh, we began working through um, the, the different types of programs we're doing. So today it is my great honor to introduce Melissa Kingman-Rowe. 
She specializes in sculpting life-sized historic figures for museums and other organizations. She is a self-taught artist with a lifelong interest in many different forms of art. However, sculpting has become her main interest. Melissa wants us as the audience to understand the character of each person she creates, what it would be like to meet them in person, what motivated and interested them, and what made them significant to the history of our great country. Please uh, welcome Melissa. Thank you so much. It's just such a pleasure to be here. I told Marie I could, I could talk for hours about this, but um, give me a five-minute warning. So I got away today. I'm, I'm a wonderful artist, but I got away today without my brochures. Unbelievable. I have one that I had with me, so Marie's going to send that around to you guys so you can better see what I do. Um, I, as Marie said, I um, have been an artist all of my life and have delved in many different forms of art, uh, painting, drawing, I've done lots of portraits, that kind of thing. And about um, seven, eight years ago, I decided that I would try my hand at sculpting. And the Capper Foundation had asked me to produce a design for their Meals on Wheels, and I decided to endeavor to do Arthur Capper. And did Arthur, and I thought he turned out pretty good, and that was kind of the launch of this whole thing. <coughs> My pieces are not bronzes. As the brochure goes around, you will see that they are very, very lifelike. Um, I, I sculpt out of a reinforced polymer clay, and they are painted, and the bodies are made out of metal and wire, and um, I make all the clothing, unless I can find an antique piece that incorporates into those. My clientele are museums and other organizations <coughs> that are interested in depicting in a scene the character of a, a historic, you know, person. And um, so as you, as the brochure goes around, you'll see that I, my target is to make them as realistic as possible. Um, my first piece was Arthur Kepper. Um, I have uh, an Amelia Earhart. Um, Amelia's at the Amelia Earhart Birthplace Museum up in Atchison, if anyone's been up there. A lot of people see her up there. Uh, Amelia was an amazing person. Um, part of what I do is education. And it's just such a wonderful thing for me to be able to research these people that were so fabulous in our history. Um, I, before I start sculpting, I surround myself with all kinds of images of the person that I'm <coughs> sculpting. Uh, believe it or not, the hardest thing about what I do is trying to figure out what somebody looks like. And if you ever look at pictures of yourself, you know, you look different in every picture. And um, it, it's really, really interesting. It's, it's hard to, you know, exactly pinpoint that. So that's my first, my first um, effort. And I, um, I'm so lucky as, you know, I sculpt these pieces, I try to understand what it is that drove that person, what their spirit was. What I want to tell the audience about each, each person that I'm, that I'm researching. So I do quite a bit of research and, and determine what it is I'm trying to say. Uh, Amelia Earhart, fantastic, fantastic person. What an icon and what a wonderful spirit she had. Born in and really raised in Atchison. If you've never been to the Birthplace Museum, it's just a, a really neat place to go. She was really raised on the banks of the Missouri River. It's just beautiful. Um, what a wonderful Kansas girl, and somebody we should be really, really proud of here in Kansas. Uh, Wild Bill Hickok is another one of my creations, and Wild Bill is um, out at the Fort Wallace Museum out in uh, south of Oakley. 
Well, Bill was an incredible Kansas guy, too. We don't really know if, how many people he killed, but it was probably uh, countless. And we're not really sure if he was a good guy or a bad guy. Luckily, he was on the side of the law, so we got to, uh, he got to, uh, you know, be a, a, law, a lawman. He, uh, his last um, stint was in Abilene, and he was there for several years. And they say he spent more time in the brothels and the gambling houses than actually out on the streets. But he, um, his, the last thing he did in Abilene, there was a, a shootout. And while Bill accidentally uh, uh, shot and killed his, his, one of his deputies. And it was the last time he ever served any kind of a position in law, or in, in law enforcement. He then went around and gambled throughout the West and ended up in Deadwood, South Dakota. You guys probably know this story. He is, uh, was shot dead in a, in a saloon in, in uh, Deadwood um, and was holding a hand of aces and eights. And a uh, really interesting guy, interesting guy. Um, I have sculpted many different figures. Um, I recently finished a uh, piece for the Countryside United Methodist Church. It's Jesus Bearing the Cross. Talk about an interesting piece. As I sculpt and get to know these individuals, I kind of bond a little bit with them. It's kind of interesting. I try to get in their spirit and, and uh, bond with them. And I kind of wondered what the experience of sculpting Jesus would be like bearing the cross. And it was an interesting experience. Um, I wondered if I would feel that anguish that he felt. And, you know, I really didn't. And as several months went by and I was working on this piece, I realized that, you know, Easter time, um, we are there and, and Jesus was there to take my pain away. So just, just to let you know kind of what this experience is like. Um, I, Mother Teresa is another figure that I have sculpted. And Mother Teresa is at the Mother Teresa Catholic Church out north, if any, any of you have ever been there. Um, that was a really interesting piece as well. She, um, they wanted a Mother Teresa statue, and I was put in touch um, and through a, a mutual friend. The uh, wonderful, wonderful experience sculpting her. What a fabulous person, and I'm a good Methodist girl, and she, uh, I can tell you, Mother Teresa transcends all, all religions. She was a wonderful person, and the priest there goes back to India every year and brought me back a sari that I was able to put on this uh, figure of mine. And um, it was really neat because the, uh, <coughs> the bishop came out and blessed her, and I got to be a part of that. That was a really neat experience. Um, I finished last year a figure by the name of Roman Nose, and Roman Nose was a very famous Cheyenne warrior and was the Cheyenne Indians icon, warrior icon in the 1860s, out in the Plains Indian Wars. He was killed at the Battle of Beecher Island, and it was incredible. When he died, the actual movement, the Plains Indian movement, kind of fell apart because they had so much invested in this guy. And um, so they were commemorating this whole battle out at the Fort Wallace Museum, and that was another interesting experience. I was able to meet several of his grandsons, and uh, I worked with a fabulous uh, Native American clothing designer by the name of Ken Whitener, and Ken does all the, all the dress in the old style and everything. So that was a really, really neat experience. Uh, uh, Roman Nose was about six foot four, and they say he was so fierce, he'd rather, uh, you know, just, uh, incredible. But after he died at that battle, it kind of fell apart. So 
uh, another interesting experience, you know. Um, I have also sculpted James Naismith for the Great Overland Station. Um, James was, uh, again, a fabulous guy. You guys, a lot of you know him. A lot of KU fans know about James. Uh, Dr. Naismith was the inventor of basketball. And uh, again, I got, to, I got to research the kind of basketballs that he would have had and, um, you know, all that. So it was, that, that's a neat experience, too. Um, let me think about this, since I don't have my brochure in front of me. Um, let's see. Oh, Evil Knievel. Another piece that I have uh, endeavored to do, the Evil Knievel Museum helped me uh, with that commission piece. And wow, I don't know what to say about Evil. He was quite a guy. And um, Evil Knievel was, um, was uh, photographed by Sports Illustrated for the cover of uh, Sports Illustrated in October of 1974. And um, they had at the museum the same costume, you know Evil's costume, it was white and he had stars and, and everything on this thing. Uh, they allowed me to put the same costume he was wearing for that photo shoot on my figure. And quite, that was quite an experience. I was at home and I had this costume for only several days. And um, this was a very, very um, expensive costume, as you can imagine, and very valuable. And as my husband was helping me put this thing on my figure, you know, I was like, Mark, if something happens to this, we're selling the house. <laughs> I mean, it is just not going to be good. But he's over at the Evil Knievel Museum, too. So um, I'm so lucky that I get to do this because I do feel such a connection with each piece that I do. Um, my next piece is um, going to be um, um, a a gentleman by the name of Theophilus Turner. Theophilus is a commissioned piece by the Fort Wallace Museum. And Theophilus, believe it or not, we don't know much about him here in eastern Kansas, but in western Kansas he's very, very famous. He, uh, in the 1860s, was out at, in the Fort Wallace area and uh, was looking around and discovered a very famous dinosaur and dug this dinosaur up, sent that dinos those dinosaur bones back east and it became this huge deal. Um, so they have a cast of this dinosaur out in that museum out there. And um, so this is my next piece and I'm to deliver that in October. So um, that's fun. And, in, and then in January I will start a piece um, a K, a Judge K. McFarland for the new K. McFarland uh, Event Center in Gage <coughs> Park. So that's going to be a neat piece. And I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think the Event Center, last I heard, was supposed to open up in, <coughs> oh gosh, in about uh, next summer, late next summer sometimes, last I heard. So I have not started her yet, but I've been collecting images and, and everything. So. Uh, how I really got started with this is my mother is a fantastic artist and began working with smaller pieces um, about 20, 25 years ago and made a line of really fabulous 17-inch uh, tall pieces. And um, she, although she does not sculpt anymore, she certainly comes over and, and uh, helps me with the sculpting and, and that kind of thing. So, we're very, very close. I'm very lucky to, to have her as a best friend. So, um, I, does anyone have any questions? I also do a line of whimsical pieces. I do Santas, I do elves. If any of you have ever been to Fairlawn Plaza and seen their huge elf display there, I, I do those. And uh, Fairlawn Plaza is kind of neat because they, when they discovered I did look alike pieces, they had me do several pieces that looked like um, people that were close to Fairlawn Plaza. They have a, a secretary there that um, I did a, a look-alike elf too. 
Randy Austin has a look like out there. Um, yeah, it's really kind of neat. So not all of them are lookalikes, but they have quite a display there if you get there at Christmas time. So anyway, that's what I do. And I sell my whimsical pieces through a store in St. Charles, Missouri. And um, so anyway, they handle those. And I have a, a Facebook page too. It's Melissa Rao Artist. And you can go there and see all the work. I do tons of, tons of pictures. So, I don't, does anyone have any questions? I, I'm so sorry, I don't have my brochures. Yeah. I could just give you a tip on uh, Chief Justice McFarland. She used to say, if you can't see the jewelry from across the street, it's not big enough. <laughs> I have heard that. I have heard that. And I'm working with Elaine Schwartz. Okay. And Elaine has some of that, and I, I, I'm thinking that we're going to try to, you know, put some of her original jewelry on this piece. So, but I haven't started it yet, so we'll have to see. So. Uh -huh. Can you describe a little bit more about uh, the materials and the process sure. of creating the yes. bodies and faces and all that? Right. I sculpt the face first because everything plays off of that. And um, really, I'm a pretty fast sculptor. Um, it'll take me two weeks to produce, you know, a face, a head. And then um, the bodies are metal and wire, and it's a metal frame. And I uh, pad that, and um, I use lots of different things for muscles, um, you know, lots of different pieces. It takes about probably two and a half months to create a figure. And that does not include the time that it takes for me to research the piece. Yeah. Yes? Are your works designed to be shown outdoors or all? They are inside, they are inside pieces. They are inside pieces. And you know, I really do not compete with bronzes at all because they teach you know, each, each each different thing teaches somebody something. And my pieces look realistic. They look, what I want to do is to show you what it would be like to stand in front of Mother Teresa. You know, to, to look at Jesus and, and know what he went through on the cross. To look at, at Roman nose and to understand what his character was like. And what it would have been like maybe to, to talk to him or to stand next to him. Um, what their spirit conveyed. They are inside pieces. They are dressed. And again, I, I either make the clothing myself or I incorporate antique pieces. So, yeah. Who would you like to do that you have not done? Oh my gosh, there are so many. I mean, there are... So many pieces. I would love to do um, Dwight Eisenhower. I would love to do Dwight Eisenhower. Um, he would be just a great person to you know, I have a lot of respect for him. There, there are so many. If you are ever out in western Kansas, Fort Wallace, the Fort Wallace Museum is an amazing place. And it is on one of those scenic byways and it is beautiful and it is chock full of incredible art. I mean, you walk in this little museum and there's just amazing art in that place. Stop and see them. They have, they have great stuff there. But you know what? I, there are so many wonderful Kansas people I would love to do and um, just, you know, we have such a, a rich history here in Kansas. We were such a transient state uh, for the people in the United States. We came through, um, mo a lot of people came through St. Louis, and then they went to Kansas City. We were a stopping place for all, most of the people that came out west, much more so than Nebraska or Oklahoma. There are more roads in the state of Kansas than in Nebraska or Oklahoma, and that's part of the reason why. We, were, we established them very early because we had so many people traveling through our state. And um, yeah, so, and this, this, my art incorporates so many things that 
I have done in my life. I have sewn voraciously. I, you know, have done many, many portraits. Um, I love history, and it brings everything together that I have done. So it's really an honor to be able to, to do this. And um, I, I feel honored when I am able to touch people and, and know that they are making an impact on, on their lives or uh, that kind of thing. So. Uh -huh. Your Arthur Capper sculpture is on display at the Capper yes, Foundation, thanks yes, to you. Yes, yeah. And we have lots of visitors and lots of tours. And as you said, it is very realistic, very life-size. And uh, I think you made it for one of our anniversaries and we now have- Yes, a I did, place. yes, so right, thank you. right. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a much better artist than I am marketer, so <laughs> don't have those brochures, but uh, I'll try to catch it next time, I guess, on that. So, um, Any other questions or anything? Uh -huh. Did you say you have a website? I, d I do not have a website. I have a Facebook page, Fiction. and it is Melissa Rao Artist, and you can look that up and like my Facebook page. And I really, uh, I do historic pieces, and as I mentioned, I do many whimsical pieces. And my whimsical pieces are all different sizes. I do them from 10 inches tall to, uh, my gosh, I do a line of sweet witches that are about four feet, nine inches tall. So um, I love the fantasy too, love that. And it also is such a wonderful creative outlet for me. So it's really a, a very neat thing. It's a real niche. Not everybody wants a historic piece standing in their living room. But um, I'm very honored to be able to do that and provide that to people. I feel like it's an education for people. And that's my goal. So. Thank you, Melissa. It is our practice to donate a book to Ross Elementary School, which we've done for many years, and we will ask you to sign the book plate. Oh, okay. So you'll yeah. be acknowledged that way. We also have our four-way test coin, which we'll recite, recite shortly. So please keep this right. or pass it along to somebody in the future. Okay. And thank you for thank your presentation. You. Thank you. I did miss one announcement earlier. Um, actually, I have two more. Um, we are moving our orientation for Red Badge members uh, to a quarterly basis. And our next one will be October 10 over the noon hour. And box lunches will be provided. So if you're a Red Badge member who has not yet been through orientation, that's the time to do it. Because the next chance will be what, probably January. So please uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, and. Going back to no noon meeting next week, we will have the social celebration of uh, Linda's retirement evening at <laughs> Celtic Fox. There has been a notice that has gone out. We ask that you RSVP by next Monday. So hopefully we will see you at the Celtic Fox at 5.30, if not sooner. And let's conclude our meeting uh, with the four-way test. <clears throat> Of the things we think, say, or do, is it true? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And will it be fun? Thank you much.